What's up you guys? Welcome to Modern Music Expo, the online expo for the 21st century music creator. So today we have a really amazing panel for you guys on writing international hits. I'm here with Ali Alberti, who is an incredible songwriter, top liner from Miami. Ali is half Mexican and she's well known for her Latin crossover hits with artists such as Anita, Becky G and Lele Pond. She's also had a lot of songs recorded in the pop market and hip hop markets with artists like Snoop Dogg, Dylan Francis, Ali Brooke, and many others, as well as having had placements in major film and television, such as Birds of Prey, Fast and Furious, and a placement in an upcoming movie featuring J-Lo called Marry Me. She's written songs that have accumulated over a billion streams online, and she has multi-platinum certifications across the board. So a total badass. Next up, we have Heroism, who is a producer and songwriter with over 90 world number ones. It's mind blowing. Uh, Ali, you will hear her say in this panel that she's gone to his house and it's nothing but platinum records on the wall. And I've also been to his house to write. And I remember that very clearly, just completely shocking and amazing. Hero was born in Japan. He currently lives in Los Angeles here. And he's worked with many, many top artists such as Austin Mahone, Orianthi, Juju, Seiko Matsuda, The Eyes, Kumi Koda, and many, many, many others. Like I said, 90 number ones. It's hard to count at this point. Hero is extremely experienced in working for the international market. Even as we were discussing this, he was talking about an artist in India that he is working with. He's worked with artists from Greece, Japan, Korea. I mean, just about any market you can imagine. So both of these artists are so incredible and they're gonna have so much wisdom to share with you guys that you can apply to your own careers. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the Writing International Hits panel. All right, you guys, so I'm here with Heroism and Ali Alberti, who are both massively successful international and U.S. writers as well, but today we're going to be focusing specifically on writing for the international market, writing international hits. So yeah, without further ado, I just want to jump right in and ask them some questions, you know, dig right into the nitty gritty of it. So yeah, I kind of just want to find out a little bit more how you guys got started writing and producing, um, how you specifically got started and writing for international music as well. I guess ladies first. <laughs> <Ali>. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the intro, Alina. Um, so yeah, I started when I was around 15. I always, I think I, my mom always says, Alice started singing before she could speak. So music has always been like a part of my um, initial, you know, break. I started writing for myself at 15, 16. I had an artist project, which I slowly kind of just let go as, as I got a little bit older and then all the songs that I would write for myself started getting placed for other artists. So I was like, oh, cool. I could be a songwriter. So I took that a little bit um, seriously. And that's when I kind of, there was a breaking point where I was like, I don't want to be an artist anymore. And then I just kind of took the songwriting um, route. I became independent where I, you know, I started learning how to record myself. I'm on Logic. And I knew that that was an important part of my career of having independence as a songwriter. And I've been writing, yeah, for 10, 15 years. I actually moved to Mexico City because that's where a lot of the Latin music was being made. And so I lived there for about five, six years. I did the rounds, the heavy rounds for the first two years. And then I started, you know, going up the ladder. And then from there, I was like, I want to go global. So that's when I made the big decision of moving to LA. And I knew that, you know, my bilingual abilities kind of gave me that chance to just get in different rooms. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Yeah. And doing it so, so, so well. And it's oh, just so crazy. So crazy to hear your story too. And also like, I know you let go of your artist project, but I still want you to be an artist because you have a great voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want you. everybody to be an artist. I'm like all the writers, <laughs> I want them to release their own projects. Um, I feel like we are artists in a way, you know? I mean, we're creative, we, so we, we are, are. We really are. Yeah, we really are. You guys are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, how about you, Hero? Uh, yeah, I started my career like same, yeah, 15 or 16 years, and I have my own like pop rock band. And yeah, that 
doing doing well, but like uh, I couldn't imagine like uh, me playing like the biggest star gym in the world or at the moment in Tokyo. But at the same time, I can I could imagine like uh, my song will be played like a huge stadium. And then like uh, I decide like uh, maybe to be producer and producing more producing more artists have more like a uh, possibility. And then like that was around 20. And yeah, that was not easy. And I had a really, really hard time to <laughs> get like a very first cut, but like uh around like five years or six years like having a hard time no cut and then, five or six years wow yeah yeah so i'm talking to like a young writer also like uh, the artist who signed with me like uh never like uh, i can i can tell like a really never never give up <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah so, because, because i had a really hard time but like once i had a one cut and then like a boom, like a binary something. Yeah, I'm just gonna quickly interject because some of the people listening might not know what a cut is. So a cut is industry jargon, you guys, for when an artist records your song that isn't you. <laughs> so you're gonna hear this word a lot today. <laughs> oh, <But>. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I just I kind of had a thought of like, oh, some people are not not gonna know what that means. So, but back to you, hero. <laughs> yeah. So then, like, uh, luckily I had a uh, some cut in Japan, and the moment like uh, a lot of European artists and songwriter is like was coming to Tokyo for writing for J-pop. And then like, uh, yeah, that was lucky for me, but I got a opportunity also like uh, fly to Europe and join the writing camp for like European artists and like uh, whatever, I mean, like uh, international artists there. And I think like uh, I was the only one Japanese there and like uh, looking for any like uh, international cut i mean of course like uh, at the moment like asian cut is huge so like uh, everyone except me want like her uh, agent number one of course but honestly to me like uh, i'm flying all the way from tokyo to like uh, helsinki and stockholm and like uh, or i i went all over europe so i was like maybe like one song like uh, for j-pop that's what i i really want to do too but like one song for like a uh, european artist or like whatever <laughs> except like an asian cut and that's like my beginning uh, and fortunately like uh, a lot like uh, my like a partner out there bring me like a german hit song and greek song and yeah that was like a really my like a turning point and then like uh, everyone was talking about la la is uh, like uh, top of the pop and everyone wanna go there but it's really hard to write song people is just having like a like a beer or just drinking and just having party and you can't you can't write song here or there <laughs> but like to me like uh, oh yeah wow well, i i want to try that and then <laughs> yeah it's so true we were party, just talk we before we started recording we were talking about like writing camps for those of you guys that don't know so that's when a group of writers, producers gets invited to a location a lot of the times. Um, and it's like a big studio. They usually rent out like a publishing company or a label. And they give us like assignments, basically, right for this person, right for this person. Sometimes the artist is there too. So, but a lot of the times, yeah, we were talking about how, you know, Ali is a songwriter. So she's like, oh, it's like great. You know, you come in, you write a song. But for producers, it's kind of hard because we're trying to like focus but people are just like having so much fun and drinking so it's really actually challenging to produce songs at camps but anyway back to you yeah, yeah so being like uh, i had a really good like relationship and yeah 
I was able to move here and like five years ago, yeah, like uh, I had a, I have a studio here in LA and yeah, maybe less traveling and I'm missing, but like uh, it's really good, like uh, just being here and having a lot of guests from all over the world, literally, and I'm very happy to uh, produce artists, like, international artists. Yeah, and you've you've just produced artists from all over the world, which I think I want to get into with both of you guys. So I know both of you guys are very broad artists. You create for so many different types of things. Um, but I do know that you both have like a little bit maybe of a focus on international music. So I'm curious for our viewers, what are some of the biggest differences writing for let's say the US versus Japan or Korea or Latin America or Greece or India? Ali? <laughs> um, I, think it, <laughs> I think it just depends. Like I know when I'm writing for the Latin market, what they're looking for sonically, who would be great to bring in for that. And it's just, you know, it just kind of depends on the artist and what they're looking for on the label as well. So my, since I'm bilingual, my brain kind of just, when I'm in a Latin room, my brain goes to Spanish. And then when I'm in a pop room, my brain goes to English. And so sonically, they're very different. But since I listen to both types of music, it's kind of easy for me. And also I grew up speaking Spanglish. So it's, it's yeah, I feel like it just, when you go in the room, you know what you're working for and you have a lead on that. So you, you try to go for that. Makes sense. Hero. Yeah, so I think the good example is like uh, it's the difference between writing with Justin Bieber and writing something like Justin Bieber. And if that, like, uh, let's say, like a Japanese artist want to do something like Justin Bieber, and if writing with Justin Bieber is more like just a vibe and what he want to do and what what's cool and that's the best but like for japanese market it's more about like a tie-in and tv commercial and also like a tv drama because that's the like a, uh, the best opportunity to release song so people even artists have to care about like uh, what the theme and also like uh, so tv commercial is just a 50 15 seconds or like a 30 second so like uh, we really want like a strong part the cook should be still strong so like uh, the reference the justin bieber's deep reference is very vibey and just the rose but like uh, that's never that never makes sense so we gotta make like uh, still need a strong hook so that's like a really big difference i think so you have to kind of marry like the coolness of yeah. u.s artists with like just hooky catchy yeah. vibe yeah. of asia so i think like a verse and puri that's like a free part so we can do really vibey first and three and need a little like a build up and chorus is like still need to be fun and otherwise <laughs> like a tv company never say yes so that's the yeah. difference i guess yeah you kind of have to think about like commercial use more than just does the artist like it yeah mm, it is interesting um i'm curious about more some of the mechanics of like, cause you, you already mentioned some of like specifically for focusing on the chorus, like for some of your guys' biggest hits, like I'm going to leave that up to you, like your favorite song that you've had that's done really well. Can you share some of the process behind how it was written, how it was produced, like who you guys worked with and how it all came together on the business side too? Um, so I, I would say that my biggest Latin hit would be a song called Celoso um, for Lele Pons which we were speaking, you know, it's, she's an influencer, but she's also doing music and she signed and. That know, song is so good, thing. by the way. That song is so oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It was, you know, really random. I had actually worked with Develop, the producer of the record, 
a few weeks previously in an Alesso session. And we it was a pop session, so we met that way. And it was a last minute session. I think a, a songwriter canceled and they called me. I was at the gas station. My publisher's like, you need to show up to this session. Uh, you know, unless is going to be there and develop, you should meet him. He's a great contact. And I was like, I'm going. <laughs> I was like literally in PJs. I was like, I'm, I'm going to show up. And okay. um, I, showed, I showed up. The session went really well. We all vibed. We got a great connection. And after that, you know, develop and I kept in contact and he was like, you know, I'd love to do more stuff with you. I'm actually executive producing Lily Bonds and it would be great to bring you in. And I was like, amazing. He called me and he's like, oh, we'll be at Westlake this day, show up. And I was like, I'm there. I showed up. It was Lele, Develop, Fuego, which is another top liner. And we were just hanging out and they played some beats. And then when I listened to the Siloso beat, I was like, it's that one. I don't know. Like I I've kind of had an intuition and I think a lot of us as songwriters and producers, you feel it sometimes. You're like, oh, I feel like this could be a big hit or this could be a big record. And when I heard it, I was like, that's that's it. I love the chords. I love the vibe of it. And then I'm I'm a concept girl. I love titles. I love concepts. So I had a, a title called Celosa, which was feminine of Celoso. <laughs> but I was like, I don't want I was like, I don't want her to be the jealous one. I want him to be the jealous one. So I flipped it and then that's when we started on the hook. I love starting on hooks. I, I just, that's the most important part of the song to me. So we started on the hook and then once we, we literally wrote it, I think in five minutes. Wow. It was like the, e wow. it was the easiest hook ever. It, I think that's one of the easiest records we've ever written and it became such a big song for me. That's why there's such a good memory of the session of how it you know came about. And once we cut it and all the parts were made, Lele was so excited. Like I have videos of her jumping in the studio and she's like, I love this song. It's going to be my biggest song. And she kind of, she visualized it and she made it happen. I, I'm a big believer in visualizing and kind of putting that good energy into the record. Yeah. And yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's go. Like it was just another record I had written. You know, I had a good feeling about it, but I, you know, we can't really pinpoint when it's going to happen for us. And it came out a month later, it was a quick release. And it just like the first day went, just blew up. And, you know, that's probably my big first break in the industry. And after that, things just kind of snowballed. Um, I think that's what Hero was saying. It's like, once you get that first big one, everything kind of just like falls into place. And so I have, you know, very, I don't know, I have great memories of that song and how it was written and the room and everything. I think that's amazing to you. I feel like you dropped so many like bits of wisdom in there too. Like I think the intuition thing is huge because so many people kind of get caught up in the mechanics of like exactly how to make a track, exactly how to write a catchy top line. And it's mm -hmm. like, sometimes it just happens. <laughs> yeah. It, there was not overthinking on it. There was no overthinking. I think that's one of the sessions that that's why I remember it so well. Cause it's like, Every part was just natural. We didn't overthink it. We never rewrote anything. It was the first intuition and our first melody, our first lyric. Everything stayed. And that, that's why there's magic to those kind of records sometimes. Yeah. And it's like, that's such a good word too. Like just magic. Just some records are magical. Like everybody's energy comes together. The producer, the top liners, the artist, everything just clicks. And you, yeah. it's like scary, but you kind of can't control it as a creative person. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. And you have to just kind of face the unknown with an open heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's when it works. Uh, I want to hear from Hero about your favorite hit and kind of how it happened. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to choose like one Yeah, because you have like a million of oh. them. I know. <laughs> no, no. I mean, but like I... I really have one like uh, it's not like the best experience, but like uh, it's like a uh, worst and best moment. So it was like uh, before moving here, like uh, I had a session with like uh, I think like Sony, Sony like a producer here, and so people thought Japanese like a super famous artist will come. 
maybe because of my name heroism is like a, and maybe they don't know me as producer but like they thought oh it must be like an artist and then like a lot like a, more than like a, 20 people like assistant and like a like an engineer and assistant engineer and a lot like a crazy like shooting crew and and when i opened the door like a, hey and so you're an artist and i'm yeah yeah i'm like, I'm like, like kind of like we can say like yeah i'm an artist but i mean <laughs> more like producer and then like the like the clip like uh, what so why like uh, why did you come here oh no <laughs> yeah oh, oh my, my god that's rude I, oh my <laughs> gosh man. i want to i i really want to run away right now and i called my like uh, the manager and hey what's going on and i thought i should like uh, i should fight this moment if i if i run now and i won't have like a good future and that was hard and i i went to bathroom and i was like i was almost yeah i was glad that's that bad and then like producer one of the producer is the play button and plays a track sometimes i only do top line so and the track was really good and i came up some something and i was like hey just give me like a auto tune really hard <laughs> i'm not great <laughs> so like i just put the like uh, <laughs> greatest auto tune <laughs> and give me give me one minute and i went in. but people didn't believe me anymore like uh people were expected like a super <laughs> like a successful artist people. so like uh, never never people accepted me but like uh, right after cutting some some actually i just cut the hook melody like uh, so literally like uh, 20 20 seconds or something like that but like uh, after i cut the vocal and opened the vocal booth door and all the people were waiting like this and wow. <laughs> That's and, awesome. and it turned out like a yeah k-pop k-pop cut wow uh, yeah in a few in a few years so yeah i was like right now like uh i can't talk like a funny story but i mean <laughs> that was the worst no <laughs> that's great that's a crazy story i've never heard of like such a bad mistake and there are a lot of bad mistakes in the music industry and they like yeah. you know, like showed up somewhere and somebody was really not like excited for us to be there <laughs> at some point but that one's bad i'm so sorry yeah right yeah <laughs> that's, <bad>. <laughs> that's the best example of showing that like you turned a, a situation that could have been really bad into beneficial to everybody and you showed your ta i think talent speaks for itself so you were like, I'm just gonna knock this out and get it done. Yeah, but that was awesome. be like a very, I mean, not like self confidence, but like a need some like a, yeah. We gotta try first, and we gotta yeah. believe in ourselves. Like, oh, we can do. It. That was not easy for me. Like five years ago here. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's actually really crazy too. Like. I think the kind of mental challenges of the songwriting production industry, nobody really talks about this so much, but I personally have experienced a lot of like really negative sessions or where things are just not going really well. So I am curious because, you know, we've talked about things going very well and successes and cuts. So how do you guys handle it when things are not going very well in the studio and it's a weird vibe? There's a lot of psychology to it. That's why I always say we're songwriters, but we're also psychologists. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's I've been in great rooms, easy rooms. I've been in difficult rooms with difficult either artists or producers or writers. And it's, it's knowing how to read the room and knowing what you're going to bring to the table. And, you know, there's a lot of ego sometimes. So, you know, you have to know how to manage that ego and just be 
has like really good tactics. <laughs> I, I think that that's like when I'm in the room, that's like my place. I need to read the room and know like what I'm contributing, how to handle people's different personalities. And thankfully, I've never had to walk out of a room or have I ever had to like go above and beyond with the publishers or anybody because there's been a problem. I feel like I've been able to handle situations when they've gotten a little weird. And it's that's that's what I'm saying. It's about reading the room and knowing how to turn maybe a bad vibe or a bad energy into something better. And it's always, because I always want to get a great record. So if I feel there's like a weird vibe, I'm like, hey guys, I'm here to work. I'm here to succeed. I know we're all in this room for the same reason. Let's get it done. So I think when you bring that good energy to the room, people feed off of it and people's personalities just start changing and shifting a little bit. So it is a lot of psychology. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, and that, I feel like you also have such a comforting vibe too. I think like <laughs> as a person, <laughs> like your personality is very, like very open, very nice, but also professional, which really helps a lot. I think kind of diffuse situations, yeah. but what about you hero? <laughs> Yeah, it's really hard. So to me, like, uh, I have my own own studio here. So, yeah, like, uh, I care the vibe in studio every time. So, like, uh, it's it's like a light after moving here. Like, a hue light is kind of getting popular, but not, like, super popular. And I put some, like, a blue light studio <laughs> set up and also, <laughs> like, a and a lot like a good like uh, smell stuff like uh, in, what what do you say Infu infuser what diffusers yeah yeah like a Leo diffuser and uh, yeah and also like a mental thing like uh, I try to be open like uh, just uh, like our uh, yeah I had a uh, one session like uh, so my studio is a little like a suburb so like uh, artists like uh, when he arrived here he was literally in a bad mood <laughs> and he told he told me oh that was the longest drive <laughs> and like uh audi super current <laughs> that was like i was like ooh, but like uh, mm -hmm. it, it was like it turned out like a really great song so yeah it literally so it's same but like uh we need to be like uh like a ha having a strong mental and keeping like a mental health really good to like her uh, yeah like her uh, it's not like always like uh, everyone will have like a uh, traffic recently like uh, i mean I, i'm not sure if we can say it's after corona but like uh, it's getting worse i think so like a uh, lot people will bring some like a uh, tire <laughs> and yeah <laughs> Yeah, but like uh, I was like, like a song, like uh, the song we we write is not only like a positive, like a uh, moment. I mean, like a verse will have some like a bad story, like uh, and puri, like we can go a little like up feeling, and yeah, so that's a life. So I try like uh, to write something like uh, the vibe we have right now in the studio. So. Yeah, but still, it's hard. I'm trying. Yeah, I think it's really hard for everybody. I think it's kind of tough for producers, too, because you're kind of expected to, like, be doing all of these technical things, but also you have to try to manage personalities. It's tough. Like, I honestly can't say I'm that great at it. Like, I, my partner, Ellie, is really good at kind of the interpersonal stuff. You know, and it's kind of, I can just turn my back and be here and she's not there. <laughs> with uh, artists yeah. yeah yeah i think that's like my trick is to like have either her or another top liner who i know is like super friendly and great at talking to people um because i can do it if it's like somebody i know really well and i can be like hey can i like turn my back and like work for a little bit and then we'll reconvene and it's cool but if it's a new person i don't know it can be pretty awkward it really can yeah yeah it's like you said hero you have to keep up your mental mental hub yeah. you know yeah. that's the i mean that's the most important thing yeah i learned these like 20 20 years and also like not to take things personal 
right? It's mm. it's kind of when 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 there's a weird situation, not just be like, is it my fault? Just kind of see how am I going to get the situation better and get it done, and then like have a great day, you know? Yeah. Oh, this kind of makes me think too, you know, because there's just there's so much kind of like I don't want to say rejection. There's some rejection, but there's also just like some kind of like misunderstandings. Perhaps like you love the song, but you know, the label wants changes and stuff. So this kind of makes me think of for international music specifically, I want to hear more about working with labels specifically, because I know I've had some experiences. I mean, my recent experience with uh, the song I did for Itzy Mafia in the morning. I mean, it's an amazing experience. I'm so grateful to be a part of this hit song, but at the same time, it was actually kind of a process to get there. I've never had a label ask for so many revisions. And at the oh. time it was kind of tough because I didn't even know if it was going to be single or what was going to happen with it. Like the, we weren't sure. So it was like just revision, revision, revision. And we were like, why do you even want the song? Like, do you even <laughs> like it? You know, there's a lot of kind of, there was a lot of that. And I'm so glad that we kind of just like powered through and cause I'm so happy with the song, but what has your guys' experience been like with labels and revisions? I think it just depends on the record, on the artist. Most songs that I've written, you know, there's it either goes as as it is, or it, there might be like a small revision, like, oh, this lyric or this melody, like, let's make it a little stronger. And, you know, I'm always down to put in the time, especially if it's coming from the label, because you know that, you know, you want them to push it. So you're you want them to be happy as well, but also you need to know when, when it's time to kind of let it go. There was a song during quarantine, with this huge artist. I did 15 revisions oh. and, and at, at, at number 10, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to give up. Like, I just can't do it anymore. Like how many more can I do? Like, do they might as well bring another writer and we pushed through and like it, it got cut. So you know, we all have that breaking point and that like frustration of like, do they even want it? <laughs> but um, sometimes it's worth it. Like you said, it's it's worth pushing through. And as long as the label really, you know, if they're asking for revisions, it's because they, they actually believe in the record. Um, if they don't like it, they won't even ask for revisions. That's how I see it. So sometimes it's worth putting in the time and just really pushing through. I have kind of like a lot, like a same experience before but like it's really like a, I, for Asian market it's common because uh, not the level but like a, like I said before like a TV company mm. will decide the song and then mm. TV guys it's same here but not always professional music guy and then they can't decide I mean they're not like a like a professional not like music year so like they're like oh maybe like uh they're like i want to try one more this version this version and another one and it it sometimes happens but we went back to original one <laughs> oh no <laughs> that happens <laughs> that happened. and but i learned so like the very first time that happened i was like what <laughs> it's a little like a uh, mess up but like uh, right now like uh, i'm okay like, especially working with a guy like uh who like uh trust me and trust like i uh, have a re great relationship like uh, there should be some reason to revise so like uh, i'm always like uh, trying to find like a real reason if they say something, another thing, oh, this this verse and this part is a little, maybe need more impact or something. But the answer will be something different. Maybe the entrance of Puri need like a, like a, maybe top line should be different or something like that. So I'm always like questioning myself and finding like uh, not only not only to answer the request from the label but also putting my new idea it's hard but like uh, trying my best to make them happy and also we should be 
happy like yeah. Uh, yeah but <laughs> our results so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's not a happy, happy moment, though. No, and I do find, at least with my experiences with a labels in Asia, they've been very respectful, and they would ask us, do you like this? Like, if they did some changes on their end, too, they, they would always ask for, like, our approval, which I think is really cool. I don't think you get that as much here sometimes. <laughs> they just take it and do whatever they want. So you kind of feel like, oh, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I did have had a lot of positive experiences, even if it's hard, like seems like everybody's trying to be respectful. I have, I have a couple of questions from audience from Instagram. So I think this question is basically about how you guys get started writing. Obviously, um, Ali, you're a little bit more on the top line side. So I want to hear more about, you know, ideas, maybe keeping track of titles, concepts, things like that. And then Hero, more like, is there any particular ways you like to get started? Any instruments you like to put in playing live since just kind of more broad of how you guys like to get going? Because sometimes I, I find that it can be pretty tough especially with new people there's like a oh like you know <laughs> the how pressure. Can we, yeah the pressure how can we get into it and just get that vibe yeah for me it's I'm a concept girl I love concept I love titles every time that I think of something I write it down I think I have like 200 titles ah. um I have separate yeah I have separate ones for English and separate ones for Spanish and if I'm working with the artist, I usually try to, I don't like to impose my titles. I, I, I try to kind of like talk for like 30 minutes and see where they're at in their life. If they have a lot to talk about, then we usually stem the concept or the title on what they're telling me. If there's not much that they're going through, or if they're like, this is my 50th session this month, I have nothing else to say. Then I'm like, oh, cool. I have concepts and titles. If, if there's something that stands out let's go for it. So it just kind of depends on the artist in the room that day. But I love to start with the concept and the title that usually guides producers into a vibe. So if we're like, oh, it's going to be a sad song, or it's going to be a love song, or it's going to be about whatever it is, it kind of like kickstarts the room. And then we start vibing, you know, if it's the right vibe, then we, I, I, I'm a hook girl, I love starting on the hook. I think that's the most important part of the song. So we try to get that, you know, done and finished and, and cut and just sounding great. And then I kind of just go backwards, do the pre and then do the verses. And if there's a, a bridge or a post, we do that at the end. Every session is different depending. But or if I'm in a pitch session, then it's usually kicks off with the concept as well. And then I've been in rooms, too, when people are like the vibes that they want to just jump on the mic and freestyle. I could do that, too. And then. Sometimes you just Frankenstein, you know, like, oh, I love that melody. I love that melody. And we do Frankenstein records that way sometimes. But I'm, I love writing in the room. That's my favorite. You know, I'm, I'm, I can walk into the room and write it all on the mic. But I also just love having that connection with the people in the room and making us all feel like we're a part of it. So I think it just depends on the room, on the person, on the artist, if it's a pop, if it's an urban. Um, everybody kind of works differently. And so you just have to be able to do several things and be able to do them all. Yeah, it sounds like you're very adaptable. And yeah, I, I'm exactly the same as you. I can, even as a producer, like I kind of need a concept like to get mm -hmm. going. But I've done the Frankenstein thing a couple of times and I find it so odd. Like it freaks me yeah. out. Like just freestyle. I'm like, wait, no concept? Like what is this about? I'm confused. <laughs> I get freaked out. So you probably are a little bit more like moldable which is so good for you <laughs> like I respect yeah. that so much that you can just adapt to the situation um yeah. but yeah what about you hero uh yeah so like same like uh, I really but to me more like uh, I really need concepts so like uh like Ali is that bring the quick core concept and that will like a really good start so we can start like a put some synth or a guitar or like anything so yeah the about like an instrument thing so i try to keep updated all the things and try to ready for use like a new sound so even like a i'm not like familiar with the synths so they could 
always like a new stuff will bring something like uh, we we didn't know so and put the try to put some button and some like a wrong wrong node will maybe change the vibe and yeah so i pretty i'm pretty like uh, open and also like uh, i try not to prepare a track mm -hmm. like uh, i really like a building from scratch and that's more like uh yeah i really like the vibe from like a building so but like uh, the guitar and the things and the kind of stuff try to be like ready for anything any idea i mean that's so cool do you usually kind of try to finish a demo the day of or do you go back later to like mix the demo how does that usually work for you yeah, like uh, as demo, I want to finish the day because that's a moment. Me too. <laughs> yeah. But like when it comes to mixing, it's really hard to finish the day. So need to maybe good sleep and wake up next morning and listen, listen back everything and feel it, it happens a lot. Like I feel, oh. Oh wow! Why, why did I put this? And that kind of stuff happens. So <laughs> need to be, need to like listen back with fresh air. Like the next next day, that's like a, I try to do that too. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. I think it's very like it's such an interesting question because when I saw that, I was like, oh, there's so many ways to get started. <laughs> like in what you said, even like trying a new synth or like playing a wrong note. Half the time, I'll play something really weird. I'd be like, oh wait, I like that, yeah. and it was just a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time, but I do have one more question. Um, and this also kind of stems from some questions I've seen on Instagram from people that are just getting started. And I'm sure like you guys, I mean, I know I remember what it was like just to get started and how confusing <laughs> the music industry just is in general. And honestly, I don't know, know if you guys feel this way, but sometimes still as certain aspects are still confusing <laughs> to me. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> how did this happen? <laughs> but um, yeah, if you were just starting out now, um, wanting to specifically get into the writing for international artists, how would you go about it? Oh, wow. I don't <laughs> think there's any, I don't think there's rules to that. No, I know. It's, this is very personal to you. Just what, what do you yeah. think would you do? <laughs> you know, what's different from when I start, one thing that's different from when I started about 15 years ago and what's happening now is that there's so much access to social media and to people that I think it would have made it easier for me to reach out to artists and to labels and to ARs. I think when I was starting there, there was it was like MySpace. <laughs> so Same. it's like it was a little it was a little harder and like you actually had to know the ANR and go to the office. And it was like a more interpersonal thing. Now I DM artists all the time. I'm like, hey, I just wrote this record. I think it'd be great for you. Can you send me your email? And I would say that 85% of the times it actually works. They DM me back and they're like, here, here's my email. So now I feel like I have like straight access to people as before there was a lot of like loops, like, oh, the a &R, the manager, and then the artist. I get to think nowadays with social media, you can skip all of that. And, you know, people are, people are willing to listen. I think most artists are like, hey, I might miss out on a hit if I don't give my email. You know, and, and they look at your credits, they probably see your page and they're like, oh, that's legit. So I, I get demos all the time from people like, hey, what do you think of this record? I listen to every single thing that people send me because you never know. It might be the next up and coming songwriter, the next up and coming artist that's just sending you music. So I don't miss out on any email, any DM. I, I think that's one of those things that I would have benefited from 15 years ago. I think that's incredible. And I have something to add to that. Obviously, Ali has like amazing credits. So, you know, she can DM like more successful, well-known artists and that's going to work. I would say if you're just starting out, maybe don't do that yet because like most likely you're still growing. So what you need to do is get together with people that are also still growing. So instead of, you know, DMing an artist with like 2 million followers or something, maybe find an artist that has like 5,000 followers, but you really like their music. You think they have talent. They're like getting going and you're also getting going. 
to hit up that person, you know, hit up people like yeah. that so you can grow together. And just build with people. I, I, there's a lot, a lot of importance of like, yeah, you can shoot high sometimes, but you're mostly going to be successful with people that you kind of like go up the ladder with. I've, I've been noticing that, like, I'm kind of just working with the people that I kind of came up with. And that's beautiful on its own. It's like, you're not relying on the hit writer or the people who already have those songs. It's, you have to be, you have to be confident enough that you have what it takes to get those records. So there's a lot of that too. I think that's amazing advice. Same, like uh, 20 years ago, I believe, you guys have mini, mini discs, like uh, in Tokyo. I mean, oh, like, like the, what is, what was that called? Wait, I, is it like the, the floppy disk? Yeah. <laughs> like like a, almost like a tape. Yeah. Like like between CD and tape, and I bring their, like the disk in person <laughs> to the office. That was like 20 years ago. And I was like a, a stranger and people never, <laughs> I think like a, like a label, I never, listen the tape but like i'm keep i was keep on doing that like uh, every week and uh, yeah that was my like beginning so right now like uh ali said like uh it's really easy to access like anyone so yeah i mean like to me like i'm getting a lot demo from all over the world like i have my own like uh, writing team so yeah I'm listening like a lot demo from all over the world and it's really like interesting but like uh, at least like uh, if I would say like uh, like uh, the good thing to write for international market like uh, at least I think like uh, we should learn about like uh, market like uh, if we go like a uh, Chinese market it's really it's like a developing like a super fast so it's changing like the loyalty stuff and a lot like artist stuff so it's also easy to learn about like the music industry stuff like uh, you can just look up the word so it it might help like uh, like what kind of songs they're looking for and yeah so everything so i envy the guy who like I just started the music it's way not easy easier but like uh, it's different it is different yeah I mean even I like when I started in Nashville god how old am I how old how long ago was this I'm like getting lost now but this was like 2013 I think I still walked around with a cd of songs and oh. like gave it to publishers and that's actually yeah. how I got my first publishing deal like that literally never happens anymore. But I think there's like a digital version of that. And I would also add, there's just so many things like this where people just organize like, hey, this is free advice. Like, please learn, <laughs> you know, you know, or even like for women, like she's the music. They have a mentorship program right now where you can literally yeah. buy, like I'm mentoring a young woman that wants to write K-pop, you know, <laughs> and you could literally get access to things like that. So there's just like a lot more stuff out there. Just get on the internet and research. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I'm so thankful for you guys being here today. I think this has been just such amazing treasure trove of knowledge for international music and just beyond as well. Just what it's like to be a writer and producer and some of the more mental psychological aspects. So I'm just so excited that you guys are here. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. And um, yeah, thank you guys being for being here at the modern music expo and guys stay tuned for more videos. Mm -hmm.